I'm about to show a clip of Chris Williamson perfectly explaining one of Tesla's many autonomous driving advantages. Then Dorkish Patel also discussing an AI limitation, which I also think will be fascinating for us to deep dive into. Tesla released its robot taxis yes. recently. Uh, one of the advantages that Tesla has is the same reason that the AirTags are such a fantastic business for Apple, that they have an existing ecosystem that this thing can get slotted into. Yes. The data set for Tesla is very large. They take whatever it is, the top 1% of drivers or something. They use that, which is why if you get into a Waymo, you get totally cooked at every junction because it doesn't drive like a human. Mm. It drives like a robot, which means that everybody treats it as such. And also this big fucking flashing right. identified thing, which is you can piss this off and it's not going to get a gun out and threaten yeah. you. Whereas a Tesla, you can't tell. Is there someone driving that? Yeah, I don't really do. I don't know. That is a sort of a bi-directional. And I have to assume as well that, in fact, I know that this is the case because I was in a friend's car who has full self-driving. Uh, it did something weird and he had to like to take control of the wheel and and it popped up and it said, um, looks like you had to take back over, double tap this notification to give us a voice note explaining what happened. So he can basically submit a kind of a bug report, I guess, uh, with a bit of context and presumably the data will get sent to some server place somewhere. Maybe that gets looked at by AI or maybe it's filtered by humans or something. I don't know. Um, that is automated driving, training automated driving, right? So you have this sort of recursive model of we ha we've learned kind of the same as I guess LLMs work, right? We're going to learn based on the actions. This is like a robotics solution, I mm -hmm. suppose, in one way. We're going to learn based on the actions of people driving on the road. That's going to create self-driving. And then the self-driving must somehow feed the data, uh, feed the model itself. And then any interventions that happen from, you got that a little bit wrong, let me correct you, yeah. can have a little bit more context added. And that helps to train it again. But what you're saying to me is that the stuff that's happening just digitally isn't having this sort of bi-directional learning where, I mean, I've maxed out my memory on fucking chat GPT. I did that this week. It's like yeah. memory's fault. Like, what? I'm giving you, I'm giving you something like quite a bit of stuff, but I'm not giving you right. fucking unbelievable corpus of information. Oh, fuck. Okay. And then it forgets shit all the time. It forgets stuff all the time. Shit that's in, I'm like, it's, I can go in the memory and see that yeah. it's in there. How have you managed to forget this? And what you want is for every person's piece of input and every single small mistake to be training the model yeah. further. But it seems like you've got the big corpus of the internet and shit at the top, which is feeding down improvements from that but it's never getting fed back up is that right that's such a great point about tesla and one of the key advantages it has the problem with the way i don't i don't know how tesla trains but i i assume the way it's trained and definitely the way the llms are trained is that they cannot respond to the voice memo you would give it of high level feedback where you say you know you messed up this task because of this reason i think that you should perform this task uh this other way which you would be, you would be, you would be able to explain to any human employee and they'd learn from that um the model itself, like the car, self-driving car model is not like listening to that and then like, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll be careful next time, right? Um, some human has to go in and, uh, and label this. We got to take this, you know, driving thing out of the data set. It needs to be contextualized more. I think every time someone has to disengage from FSD, it should say, sorry, I'll be more careful next time. I don't know what you think. When they can actually make it do that, I agree. But, you know, the the limitation that Dwarkesh is identifying is actually true that, you know, the challenge that is being described there is that we don't know exactly where or how in this big, you know, ball of a neural network that's a whole bunch of weights. We need to make little tweaks to fix that specific issue for that specific situation. And so we're like, we know it's a problem. We know that it's fixable, but we don't know how to connect the feedback to the specific improvement within the architecture of what we're building right now uh, as it stands today, which is why, you know, these LLMs or full self-driving can't, you know, what he was talking about was the LLM or uh, sorry, not the LLM, but FSD version 13.2.9 doesn't have a Grok voice overlay where it can listen to you and then have Grok actually understand the system underneath it and how to say, OK, you did this here. Uh, the user would like you to do this here. And now I need to make this change right here. And um, so because they can't do that. 
then it shouldn't tell you, yes, I'll be more careful next time because it's not going to. And you have this experience by having the same disengagement in the same place on the same road day after day after day. If, uh, you know, if there is something like that in your driving scenario, there, there are many cases where even on 13.2.9, you know, that error will be persistent. But that being said, we're figuring out ways to tackle these challenges and problems, both on the LLM side and on the FSD side. And it is, it's just incredible that, you know, we can even do the things that we're doing, you know, from a high level that a computer roughly the size of a, a PS5 that sits behind your glove box in your Tesla is able to drive almost as well as very good human drivers today. And we're on an exponential path of progress that shows us that it should be better than the best human drivers here in the very near future. And, you know, then you don't need that type of system at all. And the ability that we have to do that is just we're right at the frontier, the cutting edge of what artificial intelligence can do. And we while we have figured out a lot of things and it's incredible what we can do, there are so many things that we don't understand about it. Like it's it's almost exciting. They were like, it can do all these magical, incredible things. And yet like they're the basic types of things that Dwarkesh is talking about that we take for granted as humans about being able to take this piece of feedback and incorporate it into something and learn quickly. Like we don't have that yet. But once we do have it and you add that to all of the incredible you know magical and almost superpower capabilities that it does have oh my gosh it's going to be just an incredible world yeah i fully agree i think a couple of interesting takeaways from that clip for me is one it's yet another feedback loop which tesla has which its competitors don't have like waymo doesn't have at least not to that same degree a feedback loop like that so then the ai limitation is as you just described they can't take that quantitative data and then somehow feed it into the model to make the tesla drive down that piece of road better the next day but what can tesla do with that data so it's qualitative data obviously they can run that through an LLM to get mass summaries of the disengagements which are happening at any one moment in time you've just outlined why that can't directly impact the model like overnight what can Tesla do with that data is there any like cutting edge technology which could happen soon with it you know I think you see what I'm getting at yeah, here's my interpretation. So, you know, Dorkesh said there at the very end that a person's got to take, you know, those little clips and do something with that in order for it to impact the quality of the model and, you know, get reincorporated back into the driving system. I personally don't believe that that is actually true. I don't think that there's people that are involved in that process, at least not in a very meaningful way anymore. That used to be the case, and that is the case in a lot of things, and I could be wrong, but if you remember back to the Andre Karpathy days of Tesla AI, they had this thing that they called Operation Vacation, which was basically we want to create this whole automated system that just identifies the areas of improvement that need to be made and sources the data from this giant fleet that we have automatically and puts that into the tra training set and then reprocesses, you know, a whole training run and spits out a new model that's better at that thing than before. And I guarantee you that the, the feedback, the disengagement feedback that we are giving the model right now is part of that whole f automated flywheel that Tesla has created to ingest data about how to make improvements and then go through a workflow to start to, to do those things. The problem is that a lot of the things that bother us are so far down the punch list of priorities that really need to be made you know they're usually working at a much deeper level and trying to solve like big classes of problems all in one shot instead of trying to chase a million little different nuisance issues for drivers and so i think that's one of the reasons why yes you know we're, we're submitting this data this data is valuable eventually these issues will be solved but they're usually trying to solve these issues at the most foundational level within the system that they can so that they can solve as many issues at a time as they can. And they're working down, you know, like these things are going to be rated by safety difficulty. And so they're progressing, you know, down a punch list of what is the one issue with the software right now that causes the most safety critical risk within the system. 
that's where all the focus is going to be placed. And so, you know, that's another reason why a lot of the feedback that's being given by users, it is getting captured. It will produce something in the long run, you know, but maybe you're not going to see a very tight feedback loop on your specific issue on your road to when that actually gets solved because it just hasn't, you know, risen high enough yet on the overall list of things that Tesla needs to fix. So is is there a future where a disengagement can happen, somebody can then send Tesla a message, and that can automatically be fed into a model, which is then training automatically, because that's the flywheel, right? If that data could instantly go into the model to train Tesla's full self-driving every time you had a disengagement, and it was just iteratively getting better and better and better, disengagement starts to drop, you wouldn't even need a human to be editing the model, like... Is that too far pie in the sky or is there a reality in a year or two's time where that thing could happen? Uh, there's definitely a reality where we're moving in that direction. You know, is it a year from now, two years from now? I'm not entirely sure. One of the, you know, things that we're observing as Tesla rolls out their robotaxi service is that they are sending these, you know, small fleets of cars around to do some mapping of the areas that they're going to be operating their robotaxis in. And there have been comments that at least infer, you know, we don't know this for sure, but it seems like what Tesla is doing is they're building their own in-house maps that are not necessarily the same as the super high definition maps that Waymo has to build in order to operate, you know, where they're trying to get the locations of everything in a scene down to sub centimeter accuracy. These would be more of like a medium resolution map, what I would understand, where they are trying to have better contextual driving information than they're just getting from Google Maps and the real time vision. So you can capture things like, man, you know, at this intersection, there's a real big drain that the bump is just awful. And so we're going to capture, you know, data from the suspension of the car as it drives around and then combine that with the higher resolution mapping solution that we have that also is going to incorporate some traffic stuff into it so that this driver that we have can drive like a local driver in each and every area that it operates instead of just a really good human driver who's encountering this driving environment for the first time. Because, I mean, we all know as drivers that the way that you are able to drive in your local town, city, wherever, is much different than, you know, when you drive halfway across the country and you're in a new place. Um, or definitely when you're halfway across the world and they drive on the wrong side of the road. So that's... Um, something that, you know, I think there's a lot of improvement frontier that can be gained by giving it, you know, a, a good, rich map that it understands that area more like a local driver would. And I think that, you know, their ability to gather those maps, construct them, and feed them into the model is going to be unparalleled because, you know, they just have so many cars. Like, you know, right now we do know that, like we said, they're driving these vehicles that do have cameras and they have some LiDAR on them to create these maps from. My guess is that over time, they will eliminate the need for LiDAR on those vehicles as they validate their ability to generate those maps purely from the camera data. And once they do that, you know, they have millions of cars on the road. They can map the entire world in much higher fidelity, much faster. Um, and in much more real time than a Google system or a Waymo system, just because they have the density of cameras, sensors, computers on the road to actually collect a gargantuan, you know, much, much, much higher amount of real time data on all those driving environments than anyone else.